Guitar practice session 102724. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to try to learn the things that I'm trying to be learning here, I do think that trying to present the information is a useful learning tool, even if no one is listening, helping to verbalize things in a way you otherwise possibly wouldn't. So if anyone wants to take these resources and kind of restructure them in their own practice session, I'll try to provide the resources such as the worksheet, don't worry about plagiarism and whatnot. If you want to attempt doing that, the worksheet, however, is set up from our perspective of playing the guitar from behind the guitar. So if we took the guitar and imprinted the strings on the page, we'd have top to bottom, left to right, uh, same orientation with the low string on top, heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. As with our perspective from behind the guitar, I'm going to turn my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed so that you can line up what I'm doing on the screen to the worksheet on the screen and to your guitar from behind uh, the guitar so we can focus just on where the things are at on the fretboard instead of trying to reorientate and spinning the guitar around in our mind depending on which side we're looking at it from. All right, so this time we're gonna be going to the minor mode and we're gonna be looking at the triad for the minor mode and the specific note that's gonna be different from it, that being the third. So this of course is inherently useful. So it's not like we have to get into too much depth in terms of why this would be practical to do because the minor triads are very important. And the third is the distinguishing factor between a major triad and a minor triad. Therefore, our main objective uh, from is gonna be I'd like to be able to find every note on the fretboard and pick up it as the root and then be able to find the minor third of it as easily as possible. Also possibly keeping in mind as we do this, what the major third would be and then the minor third. So we can switch back and forth and make a major, major or minor. How could I do that? Well, I can pick a note in the middle of the guitar, make it my major and then select every minor that is possible related to it, of which there will only be six because there's only going to be one per string. And so that, and that's because in one octave, there's only one of each note in each octave, which is a 12 string span. So we can kind of systematically do that. And once we do that, then we can imagine going to any other note as the root note and the relative positions would be the same. Now, before I get into all of that, I go over a, a big kind of detail in terms of how this fits into our overarching project, because although this is clearly intuitively useful from a playing perspective to build triads, it's also an, an idea of how does it fit into our project of, I'm going back to the uh, related modes, thinking of our major scale, thinking of the relative positions in the major scale. I would like to be able to play not only the major scale, but all the other modes related to it using the major scale as kind of like the uh, Rosetta Stone for us to be referring back to. So, the, so I get into basically how we do that when we start off. And the general overview would be that I want to first learn the Ionian mode, all the intervals related to the Ionian mode, and then compare the four and the five, the fourth and the fifth chord constructions, or you can think of scales, however you want to think of them, uh, to that first chord construction and just look at the intervals which are different, which are the seven and the 11, 11 for the four and the seven for the five. Then we go what we're doing now to the minor key, which noting is, is still just another mode, which from a modal standpoint would be the Aeolian mode. And we compare it to the major key, looking for the distinguishing factors, basically wanting to memorize the minor key, which is fairly easy to do once we know the major key, because we just convert everything that has a major to a minor in it, except for the minor second. Once we do that, which that's what we'll work on here, looking at the third, and then we'll move to the seven, nine, 11, and 13. That will be our baseline for the minor modes. 
Aeolian being our main minor mode, because it's the minor scale, we can compare the other two minor modes to it, which would be related to the major scale, the uh, second and the third, which could be called the Dorian and the Phrygian. And like with the major modes compared to the major scale, the minor, the other two minor modes compared to the main minor scale will only have one interval difference. So we'll do a similar strategy here, learning all of the intervals for building a minor chord, and then think about what the differences are when we go to the two or the three positions related to the major scale, or thinking about it in terms of the Dorian and uh, the Phrygian, where there's only gonna be one interval that is different, and then we'll go and map out that different interval to give us that detail. Uh, I also tell a joke in there. It's a little bit more kind of, uh, you know, you, you could, you know, but if you want to skip the joke, you can skip the joke. It's kind of political because we're in political season here. So I'm, 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 you know, it's Halloween, it's political season. So I try to, I try to stay with the seasons here. But if you don't want to do that, you could skip it. Today we're moving on to the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode, looking at the third of it. But before we get into the weeds on that, I want to get in my mind the overarching picture and how the minor scale fits into it so that we always have an idea of what the overarching perspective is as we dive into the weeds. Part of that overarching perspective being practical, how is this actually useful to us so that when we start to dive into the weeds, we can have some kind of motivation <laughs> that this is something that could be useful to us. That's what I'm trying to do here. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to the related modes tab where I have the major scale and its related uh, modes underneath it, including the related minor scale, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode. Now, the Aeolian mode or minor scale is, is confusing to some degree because it's so common in Western music, like the major scale, we think about those two as basically scales, in other words, and then we think about like all the other modes as kind of like inferior, meaning they're just modes, whereas the major scale and the minor scale are scales, they've leveled up. And there's some truth to that like in Western music, but uh, in, in terms of modal structures, uh, they're all basically modes. They're just, they're all part of the same tapestry. It's kind of like, again, physics comparison. You have space time. No one point in space time is, is particularly important in terms of measuring from any point. It's all relative. You have to decide where you're measuring from. You have a similar kind of thing here. You can kind of think of this as like a, a fractal diagram where everything's connected to each other. You can derive any point from the other points. And so, 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 so all the modes are kind of equal from that perspective, right? However, kind of like planet Earth here, special that, you know, it's got like life on it. That seems pretty special and whatnot, you know? So, so in terms of that, you know, in terms of the music and Western music, that's where the life happened to grow for whatever reason, right? So, so that's where we are uh, thinking of that as we've leveled it up from the Ionian scale basically to I'm sorry, from the Ionian mode to like the major scale, right? Because it's so important. So we have, uh, we have that, and then we have the, the Aeolian, which is the minor scale, which, was all, which we have also basically leveled up into like a scale as opposed to just thinking of it as the Aeolian mode to some degree. Uh, however, that gets a little confusing because then we start to lose sight that they are related, which they are, and the fact on how they're related, which can of course be quite practical, especially when we're doing music and we wanna go like from one mode to another mode. If I wanna go from the major scale to the Aeolian mode, for example. So first thing I just wanna keep in my mind, the minor scale is the Aeolian mode. It is a just a modal uh, structure and I would like to see the relationship of the minor scale to uh, the major scale. So my overarching project then is going to be I want to be able to see the relative positions on the major scale and then I would I would like to be able to play chords from each of those relative positions which we usually learn by saying the one four five of the major scale are going to have major chord constructions the two three and six minor chord constructions which means all chords 
when we're looking at triad three note chords will have the same relative one and five but the third will be different in that we're going to have a four note away major third for the major chords three note away minor third for uh, the minor chords that is quite useful but it kind of locks me in to the major scale because if i go to something else like the dorian the relative positions are different the notes are all the same because this is the relative dorian but the notes are different so i'd like to use my major scale generally kind of as the rosetta stone my point of reference the point in time that we've put the flag down on to tell me the relative positions in relation to the modes because that can at least tell me whether i play a major or minor scale so to do that for example let's do it on the phrygian if i was on the phrygian and i'm saying i'm playing the third relative position of the phrygian what is that in terms of the the major scale so i can know if i make a major or minor chord from it well we can do that by saying hey look the phrygian is the third mode so that's the first thing i want to be able to do and say well i have to then number the modes right so to do that i have to say the first through seven uh, is the relative positions and i'm going to apply an absolute numbering system to the modes so that when i say the third I can also say that's basically the same as saying mode number three. So then if I'm on mode number three, then I can say mode number three and I want to look at the four, the third of mode number, th well, let's say the fourth of mode number three. How do I do that? Well, the, the Phrygian is the third mode, but if I start on the first mode, it's two steps down. So I want to know the number of steps, which would be three, mode three minus one, because we're on that step would give me two. So the formula is always going to be the mode number I'm in, three for Phrygian, minus one gives me two, plus the relative position I'm looking at, which is the fourth of the Phrygian, and that'll give me mode number six, or relative position at number six. Relative position number six on, on the major scale, I know would be one where I make a minor chord from, because I know that the two, three, and six I make a minor chord from. Beyond that, however, I can, I can see the modes. So by doing this, I'm looking at the modes, giving them an absolute numbering system based on the major scale, which, which allows me to know more than just the one, three, five. It allows me to, to start to get into the seven, nine, 11, and 13. But the only way I can know the distinctive seven, nine, 11, and 13 for chord construction, which are just basically the remaining notes in the scale that we're looking at, which is all the same notes because we're looking at the key of C and related modes. So all the modes have the same notes, but they're just ordered differently. If I want to get into to those, then the easiest way to do that is to, is to look at the differences in the modes. So before what we looked at is here's the major scale. We looked at the one, three, five, and then I looked at the seven, nine, 11, and 13 for the major scale. And then I compared the two major modes to the major scale, asking which of those two modes has a different interval. And we learned that the Mixolydian has a different seventh and the Lydian or the fourth has a difference of the 11. So that means that to, to learn this, I could say, okay, I just need to figure out all of the intervals and I can learn all of the shapes for the intervals on the one chord, which would be a major chord and then just figure out where those shapes would differ when I go to the two other major chords, which is the fourth and the fifth in relation to the major scale, otherwise known as absolute mode number four, Lydian absolute mode number five, Mixolydian, and then and look at those differences. So next we go to the minor. So when I go to the minor, I'm gonna to go to the Aeolian. Now the Aeolian is also a mode of the major mode, but it's gonna be, somewhat uh, fairly much more distinctively different than the related major modes. These major modes only have one interval difference. Whereas if I go to the minor modes, they're gonna have a lot of differences, which is basically gonna be everything that's a, that's a major is gonna be a minor except for the second with regards to the Aeolian mode. So the project will be, I wanna be able to, to go from the major to the minor, which are fairly different and then once I know the once I know all of the intervals for the minor, I look at the two minor modes, the Dorian and Phrygian, otherwise known as the two and the three with relation to the major scale, 
and compare them to the minor mode rather than the major because there's only going to be one interval difference like with these two majors compared to the major the two minors compared to the main minor only one interval difference so that's basically the way we want to learn it that's the most practical way as far as i can tell right we learn the major intervals and then we learn on the four and the five the two modes where the intervals are different then we learn the minor which is what we're going to do now and then we learn the two modes dorian and phrygian the minor modes which have one different interval okay so that's going to be kind of like uh, the overarching project here so let's first think about the intervals for the major scale uh, when you make the scale you can make it three ways i can just memorize the shape on the fretboard or i can i can do it with the intervals from from the starting point of the shape or i can do it with formula of whole steps and half steps so right here we're focusing in on the intervals so like a major scale has a perfect first it has a two note away major second so here's the second here that's what this two stands for and two notes away means it's two uh half steps so that that's the unit of measure the smallest unit of measure we're looking at and then for the third it's a four note away major third and then for the fourth it's a five note away perfect fifth and then for the fifth it's a seven note away perfect fifth and then for the sixth it's a nine note away major six and then for the seven it's an 11 note away major seven now the minor is pretty easy like if you've memorized the major to convert it to the minor because we the perfects will remain the same so that means the the five the the four and the five the fourth and the fifth uh will be will the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth will still be the same and then the first will remain the same the difference is going to be on everything that has a major and it will convert to minor except the second at least with the aeolian it still has a major second so that kind of messes things up so just remember it's the perfects are gonna are staying the same when we go to the minor from the major and then all of the majors are converted to a minor except for the except for the second here so if i go down to the aeolian then now this is this is the minor scale or aeolian mode it's got a perfect first but it still has a two note away uh major second and then it's got the third is a three note away minor third that's what the little m's is three notes instead of four notes so we basically uh we basically took it took it back a step right flattened it and then for the fourth we have a five note away perfect fourth that's the same the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth that's the same the sixth is an eight note away minor six so that's been dropped down that's a flat we flattened it because it was nine notes away the seven is a 10 note away minor seven. Okay, so we have to just kind of memorize that. So, and, and that's just the way it is, right? And then once we have that basically memorized, which is a little bit easier than memorizing the major, because we can kind of look at the major and just say, oh, we'll just, we're just gonna flat all of the ones that were major except for the, except for the second. <laughs> and then we'll compare, then we can compare the Dorian and Phrygian to to this aeolian okay okay let's get into it then let's go back on over here and we're looking at specifically the third let's focus in on that one our project is going to be i want to be able to be on any note on the fretboard and then find every third that i can every third related to it which seems uh, like a lot but it's actually not that much because if I'm on like w one note on the fretboard, I'll do this by picking one note on each string. And then, if, and then uh, looking at all the relative positions for that particular note, right? And there's only gonna be six of them because there's only six strings and you can only have one of each note within a 12 fret span because then th that's gonna span one octave. So if I looked at here, Here's the third on that string. Here's the third on that string. Here's the third on that string. Here, boom, boom. And then, of course, if I shifted everything up, the relative positions would be the same. So, so I should be able to do that. And then I can move down to the D or whatever. I, the next one I want to go down to and do the same thing. Like if it was the D here, 
then I can do it from here. And then I go to the string above it, look at the third here, and look at all the relative positions, many of them being similar, the shape will be much the same, except when we cross the fault line, and except for the fact that I can't go down as far because I have one less string, and except for the fact that above it now, I have another string above it, right? But I know from here to here, it's gonna be the same, right? From here to here, it's gonna be the same. From here to here, it's gonna be the same. From here to here, it's gonna be different because I crossed the fault line. Okay, so then, so let's, so that's, so we'll just start to memorize our shapes. All right, so the minor, we, we might have a decent idea of the minors already, but it's always a good idea to look at the minors and the fifths. So the, so the, the triad, when we build a triad, we just take every other note in the scale. So that means that I'm taking the one, three, five. So here's the, here's the scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm looking at the one, uh, the, 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 the three, and the five of it. Okay. My particular focus is going to be on the third. But as we look at the third, I'm also going to say, okay, could I grab the five too? And then later on, we'll, we'll get to the seven, nine, 11, and 13 uh, after we do the, the major triad in another day. So that'll be a, for another day. All right. So if I have this one, the first, we should stay in the same string. So the first one let's do over here. So if I got, it's three notes, it's uh, three notes up. So you can see it right here. Obviously there's a three note distance. That's the nice, easy uh, pointy, pointer to pinky. That's only a four fret span instead of a five fret span. So that's our comfortable position. That's in like position number, what I would call position number one. get it to ring out what's going on all right so obviously if we're there i can't play that at the same time but i could arpeggiate to right here so now you've got the one three five one three five one three five and so that's useful to know let's go down to the next string then we have this position over here if i was to count that out i'd say it's five and then four three so three note away so if it was a major third, it would be right here, right? But it's a minor third, so it's back here. That makes sense. So that's always going to be the shape. I want to just know that shape, like the back of my hand. OK, so then uh, could I do something else with that shape? I can, because I have that's my lean back shape, which you might call like a G minor shape. So because if it was a G major, it would be, you know, it's like this in open position but then you drop the then you drop it back one so if i play it here a lot of people don't play this shape but i do because i think it it's beautiful it, it's actually somewhat comfortable like if you play this open especially in the key of a you could reach up there and if i wanted to mute everything underneath it i can but if I don't, I can let it ring out in this particular position, and I get that minor seven in there, which is nice. And a B, a nine, throw a nine in there, why not? And another E, a fifth on the bottom. Okay, I can even open up and let go. Let that D play out. And if you go back here, you get kind of that bluesy note. Yeah, so I think that's a good position. I dig it. I dig it. Dig dug. All right, I have a fifth down here. So I could do that. I don't do that quite as often. But that is an option. Option is on the table. There's an option on the table. All right. How did you put the option on the table? The option is like on the guitar. Let's not get technical here, okay? You know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put it, there's this. Let's go here. This is gonna be five, 10, 11, 12. That brings us back to zero because 12 minus 12 is zero. One, two, three. So there's the 10. 
So I could grab on the way there this fifth. That's a stretchy one, but doable. I might try to work that in, try to do a stretch like that. Good for the fingers. Finger workout. I have a no I could uh I could try to grab this one. Uh instead. No, I can't. Are you crazy? You can't grab that. That's about all I can do there. Let's call that good. And then I can go to the one down here. So that's going to be... And that, of course, looks like it's part of our bar chord for the key, which would be here, here, and then barring down to here and here. So that's going to be, so we obviously we have a lot of uh, the whole bar can fit into that one. So that's nice. And so then let's keep that. And uh, I could, if I was getting weird, try to grab this one and that what do you mean getting weird you've been weird since the day you were born okay <laughs> that's, not, that's not nice that's kind of doable Getting weird. Oh, I was I wasn't weird before. I just got weird all of a sudden. <laughs> Let's see if I could grab. So, so this would be five, ten, fifteen. I can bring it down. Fifteen minus twelve is uh, uh, five minus two is three and then go up here, because the kink in the tuning, so that would be five plus three, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So three notes away. Is there anything else I can grab? Can I get that third with it? Uh, I don't need a third, I need a fifth, man. A fifth. I need a fifth. Yeah, that's not really a practical thing. No, I cannot do that. You totally, I'm not going to do it. It's not worth it. I probably could if I really wanted to, but it's like, I don't really want to. That's what it's like. So I'm like, ain't doing it, man. Hump off. I'm going to say... So I've got that one down there, which is the same... You know, if I if the same E up top, so so I could like if I was grabbing a bar chord, maybe I could I drop that one down and grab that. Probably could. Not sure that's gonna add a lot, but it's doable. Anyway. That's that one. Let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna give my joke here in the middle. Let's do my practice joke. This one's not as long. It's a little, a li I tried to make it a little political since we're in political season here, but it's not really that political, but it's a little, a little, uh, I guess risque or something. So if you don't, so if you, <laughs> if you wanna uh, fast forward, that'd be okay. I'll get some coffee. All right, practice joke. I couldn't resist the word, try to attempt that word play here with it, so that's why I had to do it, so. All right, when leftists see the American phrase, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, like the French, 
they never pronounce the H in happiness. You know, they never pronounce the H when they say life, liberty, and the pursuit of the happiness. I mean, I, you know what? I think it's because rather than thinking of happiness as like eudaimonia, like the seeking a good life, they see it as simply seeking only carnal pleasure. Not that there's anything wrong with like carnal, but I mean like that's the only thing. And therefore, and therefore what they do is they pursue their personal carnal pleasure by any Machiavellian manipulative means necessary. That's what I think. Hey, have you, have you ever heard someone preaching the idea that you've got to work harder, not longer? You got to work harder, not longer. And it's like, dude, you know, that's easy for some people to say. I mean, I could, I could work super hard all day and all night long if it wasn't for the fact that so much of my so much of my blood flow is already invested and in working longer you know i mean i feel like i feel like it's le it's less about just working harder and it's more about finding the right long hard balance you got to find the right long okay okay whatever diggler okay all right i'm going <laughs> to i'm going to give that's the best I got for today on my joke. All right, let's get back to it. I'm going to the uh, D here. Let's go down to the D. So I'm looking for the third. All right, so I'm gonna go above it this time. So when I go to the above it, I need to find the inverse because I wanna find the distance between this note and that note in half steps. So if it's a three note away minor third, then 12 minus three is nine. So that would be a nine note away major six would be the inverse. So I'm looking for a distance of nine. I could go above it, which would be what I would call negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, which happens to be on the note nine, which is an F. So I can go from here back to here. That's quite a distance. So going from top to bottom is a nine note away major six, bottom to top, three note away minor third. Okay, is there anything else I can do with that? I could arpeggiate, uh, like I could say, here's the, uh, what? I need another one. Don't use the same one. All right, I could say this is gonna be one, That's about it, though. Okay. Can't do much else because it's quite stretchy. Let's go underneath it now, or let's go on the same string. So now I go here. Now notice that this this is kind of the similar to what I was up doing up top, right? On the A, obviously this shape is the same, and it would be kind of like I'm playing position number one again, but from the second string. So where I have that... pentatonic shape All right so now I can think of that as the same thing because I'm, I'm playing it from here so I've got the one and the three is just pointer to pinky with a nice comfortable pointer to pinky only four frets away instead of five which it would be if it was the uh, major third and then I could arpeggiate with that because there's the five right there I could go one three three whoops one three five one three five one three five and then of course i've got a five above it as well so i could go like i could try to get both of those at the same time one three five one three one three five one three five one three five one three five versus one three five That's not right. One, three, five. One, three, five. Okay. Coolio. Let's go down here. So this again, the shape is the same. 
as we saw from the A to the C before. Now we're going from the D to the F, three notes away. So here's because we're below it this time. Five, four, three, three notes away. Mui B to the N. What else could I do with that? Now I have, well, I have my same shape, which I might call a C minor shape now, because it would be like a C shape. Like if it was a C, but you dropped the, the third back, same here. So now I'm starting here, drop the third back. Boom, boom, boom. Gonna add that fifth. So sweet. And so that's a good one. And so I, I do that in this particular shape again, because I like to do this, like open D. And then I could just reach up. Although I sometimes ring this out, sometimes I want to put my thumb up there so I could not ring it out, but it's not the most comfortable thing to do that. But if I put uh, the E on top, that's okay, because it's adding the 9. It's not going to kill anything too much. I also have on top of it, though, if I want to make it a little easier on myself, and sometimes I like to be easy on myself, because I'm hard on myself a lot of the time, and I got to just take it easy, man. Yourself isn't that strong. You got to be, you got to give it some, you got to take it easy on yourself. Sometimes. It's, it's like the it's like the balance thing again. So now we got the five one three D. This is a D chord, D minor, and that's kind of cool too because this one I like to play because then I can let go of this string and I play the heart the uh, open D. we have around here I got an A but that's I could arpeggiate to that one but that's not that exciting I got an A down here so that's cool it's not really though not a whole lot I can Yeah, not exactly the most helpful, as far as I can tell right now. Uh, so let's move on. This string, a third, this is going to be 5, 10, and then 11, 12. That brings us back home, because 12 minus 12 is 0, because there's another D. 1, 2, 3. So that makes sense. Sense has been made. Change for the dollar has been done. Wait, that's not right. All right, that's that stretchy one. Let's see if I can throw an A in there for the fifth. Stretchy minor. I never do that. I might have to try that more often. But then I also have this one here, which of course people do all the time because that's the bar shape for a minor bar, baby. Minor bar, baby. Uh, this C is not helping. What is this C doing here? Get that out of here. What are you doing? That is obviously Coolio. Coolio. 
It's a cool Leo. It's like a cool person with a Leo sign. So we call them Cool Leo. I don't know where the word came from. It's like how I named Perfectionist Perfecto Mundo. Because I had my friend Mundo and he's a perfectionist. So then when I wanted to make something perfect, I start. I totally made up the term no one's ever heard of called Perfecto Mundo. All right, I can't reach that one. Coined it because Mundo is a perfectionist. And like, so when you're trying to be perfectionist, you can do it like my friend Mundo and say it's Perfecto Mundo. Okay. So let's go to the G. <laughs> let's go to the G down here. All right. And it's this one. Okay. All right, so let's see. Now we can go above it again. So I'm looking above it, and so I'll do the inverse. So I'm gonna say, well, if this is a three note away minor third, I'm looking for a 12 minus three, which is a nine note away major third. And I can see that over here, because it would be negative five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this shape is the same thing I saw when I was up here, that D compared to that F, same shape here with this G compared to this uh, A sharp B flat. All right. So if I go to top to bottom, nine note away major six, bottom to top, three note away major third. I think that's correct. Not much else I can do with it though, because it's awfully stretchy. Uh, all right. Or it requires you to be awfully stretchy. And I'm not that stretchy. My fingers don't stretch that much. So then now we've revealed another string above. So we haven't done this one yet because this is the new one that's been revealed as we circle down. So now we've got, that needs to be a nine note away. So five, uh, 10, nine. All right, nine notes away. So now I've got this one to here. So top to bottom, nine note away major six bottom to top or bottom to top three note away uh major third all right and then of course i can see right there i've got that nice convenient fifth to throw in so this is kind of nice way to play where you have the third the five and the one That's nice. And then I also have a fifth down here. So it could go boom, boom. Uh, right, right here. And then. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. totally do could I grab both of those fifths get greedy that's tough I could bar this all right my head is starting to hurt I think my headphones are on too too tight my headphones are too tight. I need relief. All right, so let me just adjust them. So my glasses are in the headphones. Oh. All right, that's better. Let's go down, same string. So we've seen this one before. So this is three notes away up here. So it'd be like similar as if we're playing position one minor like if I was on the A, it would be here, there's our shape. Here's our shape if we're playing position one, but from the second string, like we 
we saw on the D, and now like position one, as though we're starting on the G string on the third, not the G string, but the third string down, but then I'd have to shift it up because of the kink in the tuning, because of the fault line, but there it is. We can of course arpeggiate that by putting a five right there. So now you've got one, three, five, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, and then there's a D above it. So I could arpeggiate up above and say one, three, five, one, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. <coughs> All right, let's move on. This is our standard shape below three notes away now because now we're below so we're saying five four three so same shape that we saw from a to if i was on the a we saw it like this if i was on the d we saw it like this if we're on the g we see it like this because we have not yet crossed the fault line however the fifth is a little funky the fifth's a little funky funky fifth that's what they call it because up here, when I was on the D, when I was on the A, we had that fifth back here. When I was on the D, we had the fifth right here. And but now, because now we've crossed the fault line, the third's in the same spot, but the fifth is right below it now. So it's almost easier to reach. I could bar it off and get that G at the bottom, get another G. So that's good to know. That's good to know. Just like it's good to know Santa Claus. Santa Claus is also good to know. <laughs> okay. And then this is that cool shape. Again, if I was on the G. So if I was playing in the key of G minor, which would be our position number one from here. You've got this shape. And that's really cool because again, I love playing there because then you can reveal that G right there. So the G minor is a little bit funky because you have like a an E and a uh, a B that on the opens that you can't really play open as easily. Although you can kind of mess around with them, but. You've got that open G, which is cool. That's great shape. Hey, this isn't a jam session. We're trying to do intervals here, okay? For crying out loud. For crying out loud's sake. Okay. Be jamming on your own time. This is gonna be five, 10, cause of the fault line, 11, 12. 12 minus 12 is zero, bring us back to zero and then three on the 11. That's quite a reach. Stretch. It's even further because of the kink in the tuning. So that's not a very practical uh, reach. So I'm just gonna note that it's there and move on. So this one right here would be the same distance as the one up top, which we counted out because it's another E string. So I'm like, okay, if there was a third up top, like here, 
then there's also going to be a third down here. Which I should start to note like every time. So if I play that one, I'm like, I have a fifth right here. So I could do like... Boom, and that's my normal kind of a D minor. It's like a D minor shape if I add my D minor shape because here's shape I might be more recognizable. And this would be the D major sh shape for a G chord. But if it was a minor, we can grab this one. And I'm lightly, I'm lightly barring so I don't have that E ring out. I don't have to worry about that if I put the finger down here. All right. So that's cool. EO. Cool Eeyore. Cool EO. Cool Eeyore. Eeyore's cool. Cool Eeyore. Cool EO. Cool Eeyore. Cool Eeyore. Cool Eeyore. All right. Let's stop it there. Uh, I'm just going to stop there. There's a minor, A minor. There's a D minor.
uh, one less C minor. <laughs> <laughs>